Hi there, I'm Brian Lay, and I'm a food scientist, food industry consultant, and author of the book, 150 Food Science Questions Answered. Um, I graduated with my PhD in 2020 from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where I earned my degree in, in food science. Um, that was right smack in the middle of the pandemic, so that was a very interesting experience having to defend my dissertation uh, over Zoom. Uh, but, but other than that, um, after I graduated, it was really a tough, I had a really tough time because I wasn't necessarily in a position to go and do interviews and so on and so forth. As you imagine, you tend to be quite busy at the end of uh, graduate school. Um, at the same time, I was also writing my uh, first book uh, as writing my, as I was working on my dissertation. So that burned up a lot of time. But uh, I'm here to talk to you about, you know, how I made that transition from being a graduate student, earning my PhD, and then eventually um, working as a food industry consultant um, where I, I run my own business. Um, I'm essentially a freelancer contractor where I help companies work on their most difficult technical problems, um, especially companies that are in the alternative protein space, and especially startups. So. Uh, my journey started a little bit actually in the middle of graduate school where I was doing side projects uh, <laughs> because I, as I realized I wasn't doing very much in terms of uh, progressing in my research and I, I felt that at the end of my degree I needed to make it worth my while so um, I ended up you know, doing some consulting on the side, talking to local people, anyone that had any interest in food um, and seeing how I could be of value because I knew that a lot of people don't necessarily have this kind of background, especially uh, people who are in business or trying to start something. They, they don't tend to have scientific backgrounds. So part of my journey was discovering how I could be of value to other people with my scientific knowledge and technical skills. Um, so that was, you know, maybe year three um, in, in my PhD work. Um, I was also simultaneously doing volunteer work for the Institute of Food Technologists Student Association. Uh, that was great because I was able to essentially write uh, and do communication work uh, for their blog, Science Meets Food. And that helped me kind of increase my skills as far as doing my writing, uh, learning about social media, uh, learning how to essentially bring all this sort of technical knowledge that I had, the scientific knowledge, and make it useful um, and interesting for people online. And that, that really takes me to, you know, sort of at, at the end of graduate school, um, I had to do a lot of these different ways to get the attention of uh, potential clients so that I could basically pay my bills. Uh, and, and, it was really challenging because I had a few projects here and there, but the next stage was how could I make uh, an actual reasonable income out of this? Uh, and so, you know, I took all my, you know, everything I learned, um, everything I basically experienced during my graduate school work, and I, you know, used all that to identify ways to reach out, cold email uh, potential founders, startup executives, so on and so forth, and basically put them on uh, my radar. Uh, so I, I ended up emailing close to 100 to 200 people. Um, and for the most part, you learn that most people don't get back to you. You get maybe a one or 2% <laughs> response rate, but that one or 2% is, is the deal breaker because you can get in touch with someone that's a real decision maker or key person that can uh, essentially provide you with a project, especially if you um, are able to share what exactly it is that you do that can change um, their business. So um, with all that, I, I'd like to offer five key elements in trying to transition from graduate school into the workforce, especially in industry. But if you are trying to start your own business um, or, or you know do your own freelance consulting, I, I this is a doubly or triply important, you know. Uh, so the, the five pieces I, I'd say that I learned from my experiences are communication, providing value, creating trust, uh, learning to tell my story, 
and emotional intelligence. And in, you'll notice that in those five pieces, I, I don't talk about at all um, my scientific work because I think that speaks for itself. But these five pieces, I think, puts you at an advantage over other people. So with communication, I think it's really key to learn not only how to speak um, and to write well in a way that's effective and, and succinct, but also to learn how to listen. Because I think a lot of the time, um, as scientists, uh, we don't necessarily get in the habit of trying to necessarily listen to a client or hear what they have to say or their problems. But I think it's incredibly valuable to know this is exactly you know, what this person is trying to convey to you. And, and sometimes people aren't, don't necessarily know what their problems are. So if you're a really good listener and you really understand a person's issue, you can really tell it back to them and, and they'll feel like they can connect with you. Uh, number two is value, providing value. I don't necessarily mean it in terms of economic value, but actually it's about, you know, essentially being a friend or being someone that can support someone else. Um, especially in consulting, you're, you're trying to essentially say, hey, I have something here that could help you. I, I have some advice. I have some knowledge, you know, whether that's here's a way to do this process or here's a way to kind of reduce the cost of something. Um, and, and you're really just trying to be there to, to be a person first, I'd say. Um, I think a lot of people think of value in terms of money, in terms of economics. That's, I think that can actually be secondary. Um, it's, also, it's important to think in those terms, in those human terms. And number three, with trust, you know, you're, you're really talking about is, does the person, does the potential client, can they really, you know, believe in what you have to say and believe that they have, uh, that you have the best interests out for them. Um, and that what you're gonna do is, you know, honest, and full of integrity um, is authentic. I think trust is a really challenging one because you have to convey that very quickly with a lot of people. Um, it, some of that is actually, um, you know, just be able to trust yourself. Um, you know, even if you're not necessarily in a situation that you understand or know, you'll, you'll know that you can, you know, be transparent and say, hey, I, I, I might not necessarily understand this that well, but I can, I can learn how to get there um, and help you with your problem, whatever it is. And for, for number four, storytelling, I would say that's closer to, you know, basically sharing your particular story, your personal journey and your professional journey um, and be able to convey that effectively to others. And you could call it marketing, but I don't like that term. I like to think of it as, you know, you're, 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 you're really trying to get your biography out there um, and, and really how you've worked with other people. And I think that's really incredibly important because we live in a world where stories are, are you know, what, what engages us as humans, um, whether that's a movie, whether that's a book, uh, whether that's a YouTube video. Storytelling is, is about getting out there and, and conveying your own um, who you are out into the world so people know what you're about and how you can actually offer your particular services. And then number five for emotional intelligence, that one's a little tricky because uh, I think I started off with not a whole lot. And ever since I have I was married uh, to my current wife, um, I, I think I've definitely upgraded that <laughs> that particular skill set. Um, but it, it's really about just learning how to read cues. It, it's really tough, I th I'd say, uh, especially if you're a person that's very analytical and, and not particularly used to um, kind of understanding the nuances of certain social interactions. But I think that's key because um, a lot of a lot of communication with people ends up being what's not said rather than what is said. So you can't necessarily take everything literally. Um, yeah, and a lot of it has to do with humor, with you know, being a personal uh, human being and conveying who you are as a human. Because I think your skills and your technical ability, they, they're already there. Um, that's kind of half the battle. The other half of the battle is learning how to, to really understand a person and, and their needs. Um, and that's, that's kind of my, my little spiel. Thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, good luck to you.
If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more academy related content, then please subscribe to the PHC Place YouTube channel.